Well, we're kind of entering the uh, the dead zone of sports. Right? Limbo, indeed. Yeah, you yes. know, in high school sports and in college too, July is the, the challenging period. What is? But there are things going on here on Talking Sports in July. Sure, and there's not that many. There's a few. Uh, I lied. There's nothing. <laughs> we we might we might not be able to do a show this month, besides from this one. But regardless, uh, some. Stuff did happen last weekend, and we're here to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think as we go along, there'll be certain dribs and drabs of things which suggest themselves, and we sure. may make a cameo appearance. What we're going to do is get down to the, the, the real how, brass tacks of getting ready for football, which is always an exciting and wonderful thing. Yeah. Before you know it, it's going to be our first week out. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Uh, I've been thinking about it more and more each day, and especially, and it hit me this weekend, actually. Uh, Already. Yeah. When you start looking for Texas football, what yeah. is it? It hit me this weekend, you know, uh, I got my Dave Campbell magazine in in the mail, and then I've got nothing to watch on TV. Baseball. I mean, yeah. it's hard to That's watch a box score sport. Yeah, it's Baseball's hard to watch. a results sport. Watching it unless you're there is not the greatest thing. <laughs> it really is. It's something to take a nap to, I guess. Uh -huh. yeah. Man, that's cool. What about all the baseball coaches and players? They're going to be like, man, you guys don't like baseball? No, we love baseball. You're it's, baseball. It's, yeah, there's a difference. Watching, you know, all these people full of steroids who make... Mm. And strike out. Well, that guy struck out 223 times a season. He should have been shot. Who make who make an obscene amount of money yeah. that, and drive in 70 runs? Yeah. I mean, give me a break. Yeah. Anyway, that's a totally different topic. So there was basketball. There, there was, was a, a great summer league tournaments. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, the thing that stands out to me the most, first of all, row over Sherryland by five. Very competitive game. <clears throat> Two very good teams. Sherryland had beaten North in the semifinals to get there. The other that stands out to me is that the Economides girls were kind of the Cinderella squad, man. They made it through the bracket and made it to the finals before they lost. Nice. They beat a really, really scary Westlaco team. Nice. Uh, and the, the ironic thing there is that they both had played earlier in the day. The Economides had an hour to rest. Westlaco played back-to-back -back games. So their speed was negated. Uh, the Lady Jags played a really nice floor game. Emily Suarez is a great point guard. Here's a girl to remember. Uh, she's only going to be a sophomore. Her name is Sylvia Pettis. She's probably 5'6 or 7, maybe 5'7. Five, five. She's really burly and strong, great rebounder. Uh, when she gets the ball, man, she holds it with two hands. I mean, she's very strong, hard to dislodge the ball from her, and she's going to be a good scorer. So Economides was a great surprise. I mean, you know, they had a couple of years there about seven or eight years ago when they made the playoffs, and they actually won a playoff. I remember they beat Rivetta. Sure. I was there, 0-4 or 5. Well, 5 maybe. Anyway, uh, this year, maybe. Maybe. They didn't have Noemi got us out there in the tournament. She's going to be there. So, I mean, they've got enough talent to where I think they have the makings of a possible playoff team. How many seniors are they returning? Uh, the, the Lady Jags? Well, no, Noemi's going to be a senior. Celeste Rodriguez is going to be a senior. Uh, Emily's going to be a junior. Sylvia, a sophomore. So, uh, Kim Barrientos is, a, is another senior. So, I feel like if they do things right, they have a chance. But that's a tough district, man. Because Vela is going to be great again. They are. They are. And, you know, brand new school, you know, this came out the bat. Especially in females. Just, yeah, exactly. Well, that's what you know, saying on the female subject. I mean, that's where they're going to make their statement. I mean, that's where they made their statement. Yeah, in sports. I agree. I, mean, you know I agree. I mean? Great first yeah, year. Yeah. You know, the thing is, Westlaco against Vela was a great game the round before because Westlaco has his Angela Villarreal. Mm -hmm. And if you have not seen her play, go to a Westlaco game. She has got more quickness and moves and fancy schmancy than any girl I've seen since Bianca Torre. Now, I'm not saying she's as good a player yet. She's only a junior. But she has got a crossover that will not only break your ankles, but you can't even believe your eyes. She's like, God, God, God. I mean, she has some yeah, serious. Go, she holds man. the ball up here like Kobe. And then, oh, I mean, she's yeah, really that's good. good. That's good. But watching her against Ariel. Rodriguez from uh, Vela was nice because they were just totally dueling, man. They were going back and forth. If that chick would score, then Ariel would come back and she'd drive and score, get to the line, hit a three. They were just, for, for I think for like 15 point stretch there, they had 14 of them. I mean, they were just taking each other. It was like watching a nice. cool schoolyard game. Yeah. You know? It was awesome. Well, that's what basically it is. You know, mm -hmm. you're just in an indoor gym. You know, it's a summer. I mean, yeah. you're going to yeah. get that kind of. Yep. You don't have your coach there to be more technical. Right. You want that. What are you running? We're yeah. just playing coach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to pass it around. Yeah. Just get to the rim. Totally. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what uh, that's what that Rose Sherland game was interesting because neither team got great guard play. Mm -hmm. All right, but they're they're, all, they're they're two huge teams and they're very active and there's a lot of banging around. Nice. Well, there's a lot of contact, man. I saw Rudy Campos go up a couple of times and just get hammered <laughs> and still try to make it. I mean, they were just attacking each other, man. You know, for he's tall, 
he has he gotten bigger? I don't know if he's gotten bigger over the summer. Nah, not yeah. really. Yeah. So for him being lanky, he can still get to the rim. Yeah, he can. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's got moves. He got a spin move. He got a little pull up jumper. I, I love that kid. He's a great passer. Great passing big man. Uh, again, as I've said here on the um, show before, I think Allen or Alan Martinez has a chance to be the best player in the valley. I, yeah, I agree with you. You know what his problem is? Get ready. He's a great passer. Yeah. I mean, he has great anticipation. That guy sees the court. He comes up looking for a teammate. He's not a gunner. Yeah. I would, I would actually get in his ear and say, man, shoot the ball more. Because <laughs> he's got an amazing shot. You can't stop him going to the basket. He's yeah, an amazing he's, player. He's a, he is an all-around player. You, like you were saying, you can't stop him at the rim because he's strong. He's mm -hmm. big. He's big. He's yeah. not. He should know, be he's, a he's damn a, outside a, linebacker. Yeah, he should be a defensive end. Exactly. And, you know, have him having him as a passer, Roe having him as a passer, um, making up for right. their – they lose, they lose Rodrigo, you know? Right, so what that means they may run their offense more out of a double on a high post and some passing. And they tried to do that against Sherryland, but let me tell you something, man. Sherryland is so big and so tall and, and in the passing lane. I mean, they got 6'6", six, 6'5", six, 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 and they can play. Yeah. So Roe couldn't do some of the things they can do against most teams. And that's where I think the, the like I said last week, the I dance. think that... Well, yeah, I think that they're, they're, they're going forward. Road needs to develop that passing game that they have with the big man, and one of those guards got to come through. Nice. Uh, neither one of them or the three or four guys I've seen, they all look like they have ability, but they haven't reached the level yet. And, you know, at the, the, the extent to which they do will determine whether that team goes four or five or wherever. You know? Yeah, that'd be great a great team thing to see. You know, they should be solid. I mean, Sherrilyn hung tough, Pete. Basketball's going to be good. Sherrilyn hung tough. They, and they're, like, like uh, Road, they need to work on their guard play. Because they got some kids, uh, but they still, it, it's not a seamless mesh between those three or four big kids and the guards. In other words, how do you get those big kids shots? I'll tell you one one that thing that they should do. Like Patrick De La Torre, he demands the ball. Now, he presents himself in the post, and he gives a target. He, you know, he kind of demands the ball. Some of those other big kids have great ability. This kid they call New York, man, a lefty. Gee whiz, 6'6", six, six and can hit a jumper. He can dunk. I, I saw him just flush one. Nice. they got to learn to present themselves for the ball. In other words, keep moving without the basketball. Come off a pick, present yourself, and go to the rim and score or get fouled. They, their big kids sometimes have a tendency to shoot too many jumpers, and that's not their problem. That's high school basketball across the world. Sure. That, yeah, that's understandable. Sticking on, Sherry. You know, they're going to state, 707 tournament. I know uh, that's not your style. Well, it's not but my favorite I'm, sport, but I'm willing to listen. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's the balls of picks game. Come on, man. Hey, when a Valley team does good, I like it. Yeah, so it's Ed Couch and Sherry Lynn, uh, through coin flips. We all know how I feel about coin flips. Mm -hmm. uh, Ed Couch a gambler, got, <laughs> yes, but a fool, no. Ed Couch got the number one seed. Um, but Sherry Lynn, you know, sticking in our area. Mm -hmm. Memorial, 40-6. to six. They beat Memorial? Yes, 40-6. to six. Wow. Um, That's a drubbing in any sport. A nail, a nail biter between Harlingen, 33-32. Hey, wow. Nice. And then Harlingen South in, this, in finally 29-13. Oh, okay. So, well, I wonder how the Cardinals did. They look pretty good. Yeah, I, I guess, you know. Uh, Brandon Garza, yeah, the big yeah. quarterback, man. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, they're, uh, they're off to Round Rock next weekend. Two teams. So the football being Round Rock, the basketball, as I understand it, the Row Warriors, uh, winners of the summer league will be headed to Georgetown. Nice. That's where that big tournament takes place for them. I don't know about the girls whether they go along to the same place. Uh, Harlingen was the team that finally won in the girls, and let me tell you, man, that team is physical and they pass real well. And they're kind of some. They have a couple of uh, tw some twins or sisters, Kilantans. They ain't that big, tall wise, but they're stocky and they, they make wraparound passes. I mean, they're players, you know. Nice. They, they, they smoked Economides. They really did. But I think Economides turned into a pumpkin in that game. But such is life. They made it all the way to the finals. They take away from this tournament the fact that we are winners and we have a chance. And so we're going to ride this into the winner. They, okay, so yeah, they should also take it away as, you know, we made it into the finals the last two, yeah. four ago in the season. There's a season. ton of like 20 teams. You know what yeah, I mean? Man. Like, but like you were saying, there is Vela and, you know, Sherryland and. Yeah. That, that district's tough and girls. <clears throat> North is going to be heard yeah. from. Yeah. Baylor's going to be heard from. I, <clears throat> the La Jolla, the wild cards, I'm not quite sure what those girls have. Uh, I do know this. Remember how we said last year 31 5 A's uh, playing for second place? Sure. I want to see if Roe can go undefeated in district. Uh, like the old mission teams would do occasionally with Roy Garcia. Like Carl Owens, Harlingen teams did once mm -hmm. or twice. Mac Allen did it once or twice with Roy Swift. In other words, it's hard. Edinburgh did it like three or four out of five years with uh, Coach Velo and then Cuellar. That's the mark of a great team. I think PSJ North won. So you got to go undefeated in the district. Like, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what you would hope for. Yeah, Maybe man. even undefeated the whole year. Can you imagine? Yeah, that'd be crazy. They, well, they, I'll tell you what. <laughs> if anybody can do it right now, it's them because, and I'm not saying it's likely, but yeah. they've got big kids. 
they're not going to be intimidated when they play the bigger teams upstate, man, because they're big yeah. themselves. Yeah. 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 Should be a good season. I'm looking forward to it. I've uh, Especially watching them as much as I did last year. Right. It gives me an opportunity to see the finale, to see the end of the story. The sophomores have become juniors, yeah. will become seniors, and man, I hope they go a long way. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. One last thing, you had the, fine, the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame was a great uh, thing. The crowd was solid. I mean, it wasn't as big as last year when we had uh, we were honoring the PSJ Bears from the 60s. But So there was about 100 fewer people. But everybody who was supposed to be there was. That was a great night. Luann Alexander is an elderly woman now. She's using a native walker. But she basically revolutionized tennis in the Valley. Mm -hmm. I mean, starting from playing in the 50s to coaching Edinburgh High for 40-some years. She sponsored a ton of tournaments. She's like the maven of tennis, man. Everybody in tennis knows Luann. And her daughter gave a speech when she was inducted, and she asked her, she told us how tough Luann Alexander was, and we said, okay, good. And then she was sitting down, she stood up, and then the, 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 the daughter said, do you want to stand up the whole time? She's like, yeah, I want to do it. I mean, she'd been really ill, but she, she was gutty enough to stand through the whole thing and was gracious and was loving it, smiling, and maybe a little tear or two. It was neat. Luann Alexander was a great inductee, and our colleague, former colleague Buddy Green, uh, was inducted in the Hall of Fame, and, you know, there ain't that many media people in the Hall of Fame, and I would say good for that. Yeah. Honestly, I don't, in fact, uh, you know, sometimes I think to myself, do we really belong in that same group, you know? I mean, it's a, I, sometimes I think to myself, eh, I mean, all we did was write stuff, you know, big deal. We didn't play anything. I think uh, it's, it's definitely a gray area, but I think if you, when you did write, if you were, because you become a homer no matter what. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? But if you stay fair and objective. Which I say Buddy was. And... Yeah. There will be a time when, you know, a Harlingen coach is going to write him and, you know, be like, well, <laughs> you know. But if you stay fair and objective, you've done your job as a journalist and yeah, you deserve some recognition. Well, I'll tell you this, uh, you know, if there are supposed to be media people in the Hall of Fame, then he's certainly a great representative. My good friend for many, many years. You know, I guess if you put in a ton of time doing something that people recognize and enjoy, then I just, I don't know, you know what I mean? Those sure, different from like a player and like a media guy, even a coach to an extent, you know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it was a great, but it was a great evening. His brother came down, and I hadn't, you know, really seen that guy for a long time. Because Buddy and I were close as can be, man. Back in the late '80s, early '90s, we were pals, you know. And I, we always had great arguments and discussions about sports. He was, he would argue with anybody. And his brother said that in acceptance speech. He would argue with anybody. And in fact, it was one of his favorite things. Hey, New York, what do you want? Yeah, they, they grow up, they wake up in the morning and argue. They, they were born and argue with a doctor. You know what I mean? So the Hall of Fame was great. Uh, nine people, which is probably a, a, a huge number. Usually there's six. What, the note here is, and then we'll close off, I encourage people to get involved with the Rio Grande Valley Sports Hall of Fame. This is not a free infomercial advertising. I really mean it because the thing is, one of these days when everybody gets old around here, they're going to want, and they're going to go to see their guys get inducted or maybe themselves. It's just, you know, the more support they have, the better. Oh, and by the way, this is good. Uh, next door to the far place, far convention Center, Vince Center uh, they're going to have a permanent home for the Hall of Fame. There you go. Yeah, they're going to build a museum. Exactly. Man, like, this guy. Yeah. And there is now, or will be. It's in the works, and that's a neat thing. So what that means is you can take off on a Saturday or Sunday, bring your family over. I'm going to you know, probably help them sure. put it together. There's going to be a ton of ephemera and calendars and jerseys and books, and it's going to be it's a museum, you know, a sports museum with all busts of all the Hall of Famers and pictures mm -hmm. and stuff. You know, I'll probably end up making a special edition book of some sort. So, I mean, it's, it's a great thing. It, it lends continuity, and that's the one thing I've always loved about the Valley is that we have a great appreciation of history. Uh, we do a pretty good job of remembering our old-timers and giving them uh, all kinds of recognition. And so, one of these days, a guy like Aaron Olvetta, right, for instance, sure. he says, hey, one of these days he's going to be an old man. He wants to be able to go to that museum and see the ball that he shot when they went to the Sweet 16 or whatever. I mean, that's the kind of stuff it's going to have. So, that, I'll give you more details when I find out. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. That'd be definitely, that's a great thing for the Valley. I mean... There's a lot of history here. Oh, yeah. I mean, all in, the old in, baseball yeah, stuff in, that Renee told us in, in, in other than sports as well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They need more places like this. You know, to it's keep a good thing. What we do on a daily basis will now be uh, chronicled and kept alive and, and, and organized in a fashion so we can tell the whole story in an hour, two, three walkthrough. I think yeah. it's fantastic. So we'll keep you posted on how that, it, it's a long term sure. thing. Have the property, which is the most important thing. Then it's a matter of how quickly we can do the work. Uh, it probably make my wife do everything. Yeah. She does all the work. It's very good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Always, always outsource if possible. I'm kidding. I get cards and letters. Well, Pete, so what we told him at the beginning was, we're not quite sure when we'll see you again. I, I can guarantee you it'll be the, the first week of August. Yeah. But I'm thinking maybe in a couple of weeks we may just come on and, and, and see what we have. If sure. we don't have anything, we won't yeah. know. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Like you said, July is definitely slow, but we'll make it work somehow. Hey, all year we've been pretty resourceful and 
finding things, I would say. Yeah, there's, yeah, because things happen. Does know? this mark the yeah. end of our first year? I think so, yeah. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. Side way. Right on. Good, yeah. good. Talking sports, Pete Pettis, Greg Selver. At some point in the near future, you will see us again, and we will do our best to inform you of the goings-on in the sports scene. In the <laughs>